Hi, welcome to Trivad Sala. Today, my video updates a question most of the people asked me. The question is, what happens to the human body after we die? Most of the people simply say, what happens, our soul leaves our body and takes another birth, yes it was right, but the question is, what happens to the body, not to the soul? So first of all, let's look at what happens to the human body at the time of death and soon after. At the very moment of death, the heart stops beating and lungs stop breathing. This means that uh, the cells in the body will no longer receive blood and oxygen. Since the blood is no longer being pumped through the body, it will drain from the blood vessels at the top of the body and collect in the blood vessels on the lower part of the body. The upper part of the body will become uh, pale and the lower part of the body will become dark. If the person is lying on the back, the front of the body and face will be very pale or even grey value. The back will be much darker and look, uh, look almost like it is bruised. Uh, uh, this is called uh, lividity or this is called uh, lividity uh, or liver mortis and it is one of the first thing that uh, a scientist will look at to try uh, to determine when someone died and if they uh, were moved after death. At this point, most of the cells in the body are still not dead. While the brain cells die in the first few minutes after the heart stops, uh, muscle cells can live for uh, several hours and skin and bone cells can stay alive for days. How is this possible? Well, the cells use a different type of respiration that when the heart and lungs were working while the person was alive. The cells used aerobic respiration with oxygen. Aerobic respiration is with oxygen. But after that, the cells continue to survey using what is called anaerobic respiration, means without oxygen. Anaerobic, any, previously what I said is aerobic aerobic respiration and this is uh, anaerobic respiration uh, I will spell the word A-N-A-E-R-O-B-I-C respiration means without oxygen however one of the byproducts of uh, anaerobic respi respiration is uh, lactic acid lactic acid eventually builds up the causes the muscles to stiffen this is the same thing that happens to a person legs when they run a long distance. The heart and lungs can't keep up with the demand, so the uh, leg, uh, sorry, so the leg muscles start to use anaerobic respiration in a living person. This lactic solid will eventually be cleared out by the circulatory system. But in a dead body, this is not possible, so entire body stiffens. Uh, this is called uh, rigor mortis. Rigor mortis usually starts about 3 hours after death and uh, lasts 36 hours. Eventually, all of the cells die and a body can no longer uh, fight off uh, bacteria. The cells own enzymes and the enzymes of bacteria begin to cause uh, the body to decompose and the muscles lose their stiffness like liver mortis, rigor mortis in another tool that scientific, uh, sorry, that scientist 
can use to determine the time of death. Okay, now comes to the actual process of decomposition or breakdown and decay of the body. Decomposition can be uh, broken down into five steps. First is initial decay. Second is uh, pu putrefaction. Putrefaction. Sorry, putrefaction. Uh, third one is black putrefaction. Fourth one is uh, Quadric putrefaction and fifth one is dry decay. Let's look at each of these steps in moral detail. Step one is initial decay. Initial decay occurs from uh, zero to three days after death. Although the body appears uh, fresh from the outside, many things are going on inside the body. To contribute to the process of decomposition, the bacteria that are normally inside the intestines of a living person begins to feed on the uh, contents of the intestine and the intestine itself. Uh, eventually, this bacteria break out into the body cavity and start to digest other organs. Since the intestine is no longer intact, the body's digestive enzymes which are kept safely inside the intestine and stomach leak out and spread through the body, helping to break down more organs and tissues. At the same time, enzymes, enzymes okay, inside individual cells uh, leak out and digest the cell and its connection with other cells. Uh, here we should not forget about the insects. From the movement of death piles are attracted to the smell of their decomposing body. Without the normal defenses of a living body, these piles, uh, sorry, these flies are uh, able to lay their eggs around wounds and other body openings, mouth, nose, eyes, eggs, uh, sorry, etc. Uh, within 24 hours, most of these eggs hatch and the larvas or maggots move into the body to feed on the dead tissue. So this is the first step. And the second is putrefaction. <laughs> Sorry for misspelling. If I am spelling mis uh, my misspelling the words. Uh, um, putrefaction action occurs from 4 to 10 days after that uh, as the bacteria are breaking down uh, the tissues and cells they are also producing a lot of gas these gases include hydrogen sulfide methane cadaverine and putrescine all of these gases really stink but insects love the smell more and more flies start to show up along with uh, beetles and mites. The gases also cause the body to inflate, forcing more fluids out of the cells and blood vessels and into the body cavity. Uh, this provides even more food for the bacteria and a nice warm living space for the maggots. This is the second stage and going to Moving to step 3 is black putrefaction. Uh, this words are very This stage occurs from 10 to 20 days after death. The bloated body eventually collapses and the flesh has gotten creamy, uh, so like a cottage cheese. Uh, the exposed parts of the body have turned black and the body really begins to stink. A lot of the fluids have not leaked out of the body into the soil, attracting more insects and mites. These insects and mites will eventually consume most of the flesh on the body, bacteria uh, of the body. Bacteria are still at work also and will consume the flesh. If there are no insects around, the temperature of the body also decreases increases due to all of the insect activity. Uh, this is the third stress and the fourth stress was uh, buttrick fermentation. 
Butteric fermentation occurs from 20 to 50 days after that. All of the remaining flesh on the body is removed during this time and the body starts to dry out. It has a cheesy smell caused by butyric acid. Uh, this smell attracts a bunch of new organisms to the body. Mold starts to grow on the part of the body that is touching the ground and a lot of uh, beetles show up. Since the body is beginning to dry out, uh, maggots are no longer able to eat the tough flesh. Beetles, however, are able to chew through this through uh, material such as uh, skin and uh, ligaments. Uh, so this is the fourth stage and the fifth stage was uh, dry decay. This stage occurs from uh, 50 to 365 days of the death. The body is now dry and decays very slowly. Tiny moths and bacteria eventually eat the person's hair, leaving nothing but bones. As long as there are no large animals around to carry them away, the bones can remain almost uh, indefinitely. That brings us to the end of the decomposition process. Most of these steps depend a lot on the climate, temperature and moisture. The presence of uh, insects will affect uh, how long this whole process takes. See, decomposition will occur uh, much faster in the summer than in the winter uh, and also will take longer in your body that is buried than your body that is left exposed on the ground. So, the correct answer for uh, what happens to the human body after why we die is this. So, so I'm sure uh, you came to know what happens to the human body after why we die. I did not explain you long, long uh, paragraphs. Uh, I tried my best to make it short and came forward to explain this. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please watch this video uh, and share this video with your friends. Uh, thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Bye.